previous episode, we explored the widespread nature of drugs and substance abuse and the various types of substances that are commonly misused around the world. Now, let's turn our attention to the specific challenges facing Zimbabwe and the underlying causes of drugs and substance abuse in the country. Let's hear more from Dr. Mawere about the factors contributing to substance abuse in Zimbabwe. So looking at it, the issue of the causes of why do people use substances, uh, there, there are lots of, you can actually divide them into four groups of causes, the predisposing factors, uh, the precipitating factors, the perpetuating factors and protective factors. Dr. Mawere highlights four factors which have played a significant role in driving individuals towards drugs and substance abuse. When people feel hopeless and lack opportunities, they may turn to drugs and alcohol as a means of coping or escaping their reality. Substance abuse is a complex issue and there are a number of predisposable factors that can increase an individual's risk of developing a drug or alcohol addiction. Let's take a closer look at some of the key contributors. So in terms of the predisposing factors, usually it's to do with uh, things like genetics. So sometimes you find these things running in the family, it's in the genes. Uh, you, 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 you find there are families where there are lots of people who are always using alcohol in the family or they're using whatever substance they're using in the family. Certain genetic predispositions can make someone more susceptible to addiction. If a close relative has a history of substance abuse, that individual is more likely to struggle with similar issues. Sometimes it's driven by cultural issues. You know, when you get married with brew beer and when you your wedding, for the marriage ceremony we brew beer, for the wedding we do some more beer, and then a child is born, we do some more beer the first birthday and until every other birthday. We are still using alcohol. When you die, we are drinking more alcohol again. And then a year later, we are doing the ceremony to bring back your spirit with more alcohol. So alcohol has been embedded in our culture as well. The environment someone grows up in plays a major role. If substance abuse is normalized or easily acceptable, it can heavily influence a person's relationship with drugs and alcohol. There are other things to do with adverse childhood experiences. It's a big problem which we also see, particularly now with broken families. I think if you look at the kind of families we have now, uh, because of the economic problems, people are leaving the country, they are going all over the world, they are leaving the children under the care of grandparents or the children, they are left to look after themselves. So all those things they are obviously going to predispose the child to easily get influenced to use substances. They may have a lot of money on themselves. They may be stressed out because they don't have the supervision. You need that parental supervision to be able to uh, get on well. And then sometimes the parents can also be very stressed. They become very bad parents. They can't look after their children well. So they end up also uh, affecting the children, having these adverse childhood experiences. So adverse childhood experiences is another big problem. We only see these things much later when you are talking to the clients and then we realize actually that the problems is someone was just really trying to self-medicate what they went through, the difficulties which they went through. It's always a big problem when you have gone through emotional abuse, sexual abuse or physical abuse in your life when you are younger and then you can't really find the understand why this was happening to you and obviously when you are older uh, the answers you find them in alcohol or other substances then you start using the substances and if we don't address the primary problem why this person is using you may actually uh, make them stop when they are admitted and then immediately they go back they go back to that same society which is a fractured society where there are problems, where the substances are available in the neighborhood. Well, sometimes if the substances are available in the neighborhood, then it's easy for you to just go back and continue using the substances because they are there where you are living. So those are the predisposing factors, which are things which are there before you start using the substance. Understanding these predisposable factors is crucial for identifying individuals at risk and implementing targeted prevention and intervention strategies to address the root causes of substance abuse. 
With the right support, it's possible to overcome these challenges. And then we move to the precipitating factors, things which usually make people want to start using substances. Uh, usually people talk of stress when they go through difficulties in life and they can't cope, their coping mechanisms are poor. Then obviously they want to also start using substances because they are trying to cope with the difficulties they are going through. Deteriorating mental health, such as the onset of a mood disorder or worsening of existing conditions, can precipitate substance abuse as a means of self-medication and temporary relief. And then sometimes also you, you may be going some, through some bereavement, of course you may want to use substances and then uh, maybe sometimes you are giving the medications as part of your medication to cure your problem like say the opiates, pethidine and other uh, painkillers which people are given then they find they end up overusing the painkillers but they didn't really want to start using substances but when they they couldn't control the pain which they were going through so they ended up using substances additionally dr mawere points out that Participating in constructive activities such as hobbies, sports or community service can provide a sense of fulfillment and connection, reducing the appeal of substance use. Engaging in pro-social activities can be a protective factor against substance abuse. Then there are perpetuating factors which are usually things in the community eh, which make people to continue to want to use the substance. They can't stop even if they wanted to stop. They can't stop because there are so many problems in the community where they are living. And sometimes also because of your job. I was just talking this morning to a young man who was working as a barman. He told me that he was swimming in alcohol all the time. There was alcohol everywhere. There was no way he was never going to stop using the alcohol. So even if you help that kind of person and they go back to their job of, the, of being a barman or maybe their family owns the bar or the beer is being brought within their house or maybe their brother is selling uh, cannabis or other substances. So obviously there are these things which uh, perpetuate someone to continue using. And sometimes if you don't resolve the problems which are there when you started using the substance, these problems, if they are not solved, you continue wanting to use because it's something which uh, is there with you and is something which has helped you all along. By working together as a community, we can develop and implement strategies to tackle the root causes of substance abuse, provide support for those affected, and build a healthier, more resilient society. Let's continue our efforts to confront this pressing issue and make a lasting difference in the lives of Zimbabweans. Join us next time as we explore the impact of drugs and substance abuse on individuals families and communities in Zimbabwe and discuss potential solutions and strategies for prevention and treatment.